My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. This is Startup. I'm on Superior Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. We're gonna go talk to Vince, who created Gotta Groove Records. Although Vince already had a long career as a corporate attorney, his love for music and desire to start a business has him pressing his way into a re-emerging industry. Let's go hear his story. Over the next five years, the record store industry is not likely to experience growth due to a dominating presence of online alternatives. However, vinyl sales are expected to continue to rise. In 2012, vinyl album sales reached $4.6 million, the highest recorded vinyl sales in history according to Nielsen SoundScan. Vince has always had an interest in music, and when he retired, he researched the market demands and made an educated decision to pursue his dream of creating a facility that would produce high quality vinyl records. After trial and error, Gotta Groove is fast becoming the go-to source for vinyl pressing in the Midwest. I wanna know about you as a person. Um, tell me about your, your history. Yeah, I'm uh, an attorney by background. I was general counsel for a company for a number of years, moved over to the management side of things, uh, ended up as the chief operating officer of the company. We sold it in 2006 and I left at the uh, beginning of 2008. Were you happy with the job as an attorney? Was that uh, yeah, actually I, actually, I was very happy, yeah. It, okay. was a, it was a great job, it was intellectually stimulating, it was a great company to work for, and in fact, um, a lot of the lessons I learned from that company, uh, I've applied here. How much time between leaving there and deciding to get into this? About a year. I, um, I considered going to work for somebody else, and um, every time I started thinking about that, I couldn't get excited about it. Um, I just started gravitating more and more towards the idea of, of starting a business. Why vinyl? I mean, it, yes, I see manufacturing, but have you always been a music fan? Sure. Yeah, I've, I've always um, loved music ever since I was a kid. Had and still have, obviously, a vinyl collection. Um, actually even had a record store in college for a short period of time. My brother-in-law and I uh, started a record store out of our dorm room and then um, <laughs> once we put an ad in the paper, um, quickly got shut down. And we got a vendor's license and everything. We didn't realize we couldn't do that until we got hauled before the dean and basically said, you can't do that. And <laughs> Let's talk about the space. I initially wanted to locate near the Beachland Ballroom, which is a uh, fairly well-known uh, concert venue here in town. Looked at some spaces there, but they really didn't have anything industrial, uh, nothing large enough. And, More commercial uh, retail. Right, right. But I had a leasing agent, and he said, you know, I got a space you might be interested in. So he took me down here, and uh, I was uh, immediately interested in it. One of the reasons of which is my neighbor's a brewery who just started up uh, several months before I did hurt. that. Well, I thought that was, you know, <laughs> if there was such a thing as a sign, that was a pretty good one. All right, so your customers, how do you, how do you find them? and how do they find you? And you've been open for four years now, mm -hmm. so business is going well, obviously. Yeah, obviously we start with zero sales. Um, another, you know, I guess every business has these stories where, you know, you don't do it yourself. You have other people who really make things happen. And we started with, you know, a few local clients, and now we're doing we have a customer in China, a bunch in Australia. Um, wow. Yeah. 
Of the 228 million physical albums sold in 2011, nearly 2% were vinyl. Two-thirds of those albums were purchased at independent music stores. What is this room and what happens here? Uh, this is the quality room. I basically take records off the press, bring them in here, listen to them, make sure there's not any imperfections, the machines aren't messing up. So with a record like that, show me, show me what, I, what I do. Yeah, usually what I do is when I take it off the press, we take the first one off, because every if there's a mistake on the first one, every record underneath will probably have it. You take it off and you spot check it, and you, you, you kind of leave off where you are. Like, for example, I've been listening to this for about 150 records. <laughs> Um, you sick of it yet? But, no, I've only listened to it a few times. Okay. Like I, you do once, you know, the speed of the job is I can't really listen to the whole record. So I, you usually do a song and then, you know, you spot check it and you can maybe spot check quiet parts if the record's pressing bad or good or whatever, just so you, you know that there's nothing on there. But yeah, we really nitpick stuff to like, you know, you want it to be as, all of them to be as good as possible, so. Vinyl's lingering appeal seems to stem from a combination of tangibility, nostalgia, and perhaps most importantly, a sound quality that musicians and fans generally prefer over any other medium. What types of artists are doing vinyl? Is it indie? Is it electronic music? Of course, people are going to think DJs when they think of records. Yeah, DJs really are not doing vinyl anymore. And uh, really what's driving this is, as I mentioned, younger people buying vinyl. The younger generation is, is finding, you know, there's an emotional attachment, if you will, yeah. or, um, you know, our record can be evocative of a time and place and a certain song. But it's also, you have to be physically engaged with the record. You have to take it out. You have to handle it with care. You have to put awesome. it on. Yeah. So is this business sustainable for you? Are you making a living? Can you support your family? And how, how, does, it, how does it compare to your job before, your career before. We're at the point where the business basically is, is carrying its own water. You know, it needs to do better, but I'm confident that we'll get there. I mean, we did, um, you know, basically 40 some projects our first three months of operation, which was the end of 09. Last year we did um, 1,200 or so, something like that, you know, and this year is gonna be more than last year. I think there's a lot of people that will watch this show that are second career type people. Uh, what do you have to say to, to that demographic, those folks out there? Uh, don't be shy about asking for help. Mm. People are happy to help. You know, people, it, in a way, when you ask people for help, you're flattering, flattering them, right, right because it's, you're relying on their expertise. And I, I'm, I've never ceased to be amazed by how helpful people will be but you got to ask them, you know, and a lot of, of people won't do that because uh, you know, they're, they're afraid to ask or they won't have time for me or whatever. But, but you, more often than not, people are very helpful and, and they'll, you know, they'll be your strength for something like this. The thing that people are most afraid of is getting to the end of their life and saying, I wish I would have. Right. Is this, does that take a little part in, in what you've done? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I knew I wanted to do this or in the back of my mind, I want to know what it's like to start a business from scratch. And I would have been, it would have been a big missing chunk uh, if I look back and never had that experience. So. Well, thanks a lot for talking with me. I, I've, I've learned a lot about vinyl and now I have to go home and buy a new do. Techniques yeah. table, yeah. Yeah. dust off my old records and get, uh, get back into the groove here. So thanks a lot. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Vince took something that he loved, he did the research and took a huge gamble on a second career. It's never too late to start from scratch. Sometimes it's just as easy as press and play. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Gotta Groove Records. Visit our website at startup-usa.com and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. What, what, uh, what do you call organic food? What did they call organic food in 1950? No idea. Food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Chevrolet, find new roads. 
the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online.